welcome to this four-part animation notes tutorial series where we are going to create reusable notes for these kinds of animated sci-fi head-up display graphics. If you're new to animation notes, you can visit crispy.zone to find information about this awesome add-on, like where to download, how-tos, troubleshooting, as well as a list of my animation notes tutorials. I hope you're excited. Let's jump right in. Let's start with a blank file. We can delete the default cube and also the lamp. Um, let me quickly switch on screencast keys so you can see what I'm typing down here. Now, Alt, G and R on the camera and then move the camera up. I'm just quickly gonna set up the scene, make it square, make the background black. Then I'm gonna split the screen down here and split the top view here. I'm gonna look through the camera, switch off the overlays, switch over to Eevee. Now, what's the easiest way to get this shape and get it rotated around the circle? Easiest thing, I think, is just to add a plane, go into edit mode and make like a little line. So scale it down, scale it on the X. And then if we, we're still in edit mode, we select all of it and G, Y, move it up here. And now we go out into object mode by rotating it. Since the object has its origin point here in the center of the scene, we already get the ability to rotate it in the way that we want and need. Now, we just don't need one of those. We need like a whole bunch. And then we also need to animate this. So, of course, we can go to animation nodes, create a new node tree and switch off always and switch on these three. Now, first, we need to create more than just one. And also, you know what? I want this to show up over here to look nice. So I'm right away going to define a new material, set it to emission, give it sort of a bluish tint, turn up the emission and switch on bloom. So now this should be uh, visible when we look through the camera, but I have to move the camera up a little. So now here we have the one line. Let's create more than one line. Object instancer as usual. Here we can define how many we want. And here we just eye dropper in the one thing that we have, which is called plane. So to keep things simple, I think I'm just gonna do 36 instances, which are being created here in this group for me. And now they're all in the same spot and they all have their origin here. So I need a loop to animate this and to make it, you know, rotate them around. Okay. Sub program, create a loop. Uh, we're going to plug a list of objects in here. So new iterator object list. Now we can hit W create invoke node. And here we plug in our loop. Now we can operate on these objects or actually inside of the list, we always have just one of the objects. So now we need to do some calculations. Where do we want to rotate these objects to place them around this circle? Well, here we get uh, the input iterations and we're just gonna take a math node and divide 360 degrees by the number of uh, objects that we have, which is this iterations. And the result here is going to be uh, 10 degrees because we have 36 uh, instances. So 10 degrees. Okay, now let's just simply place them or rotate them, um, each one to its final location. How do we do that? Well, we need an object transform output. We need to set the rotation this object should be rotated where? 
Well, the first one needs to be rotated 10 degrees. The second one needs to be rotated 20 degrees and so on and so forth. So we need this index, which is like, um, you know, like the counter, the iterator that we have going in this loop. So let's just create a rotation combine, use degrees. We are going to rotate around the C and how far do we rotate? We're going to need a number math node, uh, 10 degrees or our step size basically, uh, times the index is going to be the C and this is the rotation of, of the object and really we only need to rotate on the C here. So let's see what's happening here. Plug in a viewer node. Um, oh, this is set to multiply. We want to divide. Divide 360 by the number of iterations. So each step is 10 degrees. Um, for each iteration, we use the index, multiply it by that step size that we calculate here create a rotation and plug it in and then we have this so we have 36 objects in fact i can hide this plane here and also from rendering because all we really need to see are those 36 that we're creating uh, using animation nodes that's what we have so far nothing is animated yet okay how do we animate this let's say we take a time info because that's basically the source for all animation which is this time frame number and we have to do something with that okay first the first line should rotate to this position and then stay there the second line should rotate to this position and then stay there how do we do that well here we get the final position from this math node. Now we're, all we really need is, let's say, um, math node. Set it to minimum. So we could say, okay, the output here now is never greater than the final location. So whatever we plug in here is limited by the position, the rotation of the final location that we want. Now, what do we plug in here? Well, we could take the frame, for example. So if we make our animation uh, 360 frames long and we hit play and use uh, this for the output. Now we already have almost what we want. So we have 360 frames. We take the time information, plug it in here. Like I said before, the first object, our first line, is never going to move further than its final location, which is done with this minimum node. The second line is never going to move further than its final position over here. And then this one moves to here. So what you see here, the thing that is sort of uh, pushing out these lines, the thing that's actually rotating around, this is the stack of all the lines and it sort of drops off one of the, the objects whenever it reaches its maximum. Okay, so actually we're kind of done for this animation, but we want to make this loop reusable. We want to be able to plug in when should the animation start, how long, how many frames should it animate. So kind of be able to set the speed um, using parameters for our loop. That is absolutely necessary because we don't just always want a rotation of 360 frames, right? We want to define start at frame, I don't know, 60 and animate for 100 frames. That's what we want to create these uh, sci-fi head-up display kind of graphics. So let's turn our loop into something that we can reuse and um, configure a little bit better. Let's say we want a parameter which is going to be an integer 
and this is uh, the start frame. Start frame. I want to configure when should this animation start and another integer, call it frames. How long should it last? Or instead of that, we could do end frame. Let's see. Now we have to map our time info to be between these frames. So we can take a number a map range node. Take the frame number as the value. Take the start frame as the input min. The end frame is the input max. And the output min is zero. The output max should be 360 degrees. And now we use this as our time information for the animation. Before we can see anything, we have to set start frame and end frame here. Let's say start frame is one, end frame is 100, and it already works. Now we have the entire animation mapped to just the first 100 frames. If I say start frame 50, end frame 200, then we have no animation. And at frame 50, it starts moving. And then at frame 200, our animation is done. So we already improved our sub program drastically. We can now use this to define our animation. When should it start? When should it end? How many uh, lines do we want? So I can still go in here and say, I don't want uh, 36, I just want 12. And here we go. Now we have 12 lines. Okay, let's go, I don't know, let's say 16. And there is one issue now. And we can see that back here. We only want our animation to start at frame 50. And it does start at frame 50, but the first 50 frames, we can see this line here. Or actually we're looking at a stack of 16 lines now, all in the same location. Now we have to do something to make this disappear or invisible for the first 50 frames. Of course, we can do that with animation nodes. Let's see, what do we have here? We have an object visibility output. That sounds good. So we have to make this object visible only at frame 50. What does this node give us? It gives us a hide viewport and hide render. So we have to hide it in the first 49 frames. Well, that's easy to do. Um, we just take a Boolean compare. We take the frame number and say, if the frame number is lower than our start frame, then we have to hide this object. Okay. Or actually, uh, we have to hide this object. And we have to enable these buttons. That makes a little bit more sense to plug it in at the back here. Um, and it already works. The first frames here, nothing is visible. At frame 50, they become visible and the animation starts. Cool. So let's see if this is actually really reusable. Let's go up here quick. Maybe shift a, a circle, go into edit mode, give it a face so that it actually has a, a surface that can use a shiny material. Maybe scale it down a little. G, Y in edit mode, bring it up here. Okay, so its origin point is down here. The mesh is up here. I'm gonna assign it the same glowy material. Now, what do we want? Here, an object instancer. We're gonna take our circle. Let's say we're just gonna do eight of these. Um, Shift D, our sub program. This is our reusable sub program and it already works. Eight, nine, how many do we want? We can set that here. 
we can define okay those circles they should start at frame one and be done at frame 150 so we have two things two animations happening at the same time let's set this to 200 and zoom in a little here okay so at frame one the circle come becomes visible or actually there basically this is the start so it's visible and the circle goes around drops off all the circles in the correct locations the second animation starts at frame 50 becomes visible the line up here and then this goes around with its speed so the first animation is done at 150 the second animation is still going and is done at frame 200 so we have created our first reusable and configurable subprogram to create these kinds of graphics. In the next video, we will improve this loop and give it three more very cool features. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be the first to see that as soon as it comes out. I hope you like what you see so far. Let me know in the comments what you think. I look forward to seeing you in the next part. Crispy out.